Well, hello friends. Welcome to the Serenity OS update for November 2023. It has been an active month in the project as usual, although most of the activity has been uh, browser related. Uh, so that was already covered in yesterday's update for Ladybird. But uh, we still uh, have had a bunch of stuff happening in Serenity OS as well. So uh, today, let me just give you a quick update of some of the stuff that's happened in November. I guess we can start with uh, Window Rollup, which is a new uh, UI feature. So uh, there's now in the context menu for Windows, there's a Rollup checkbox that you can toggle if you want to roll up a window. Um, I forget which system had these. I think it's an old Mac OS feature, and other systems have had them as well, like KDE. And some people love it. I never found it super useful myself, but it seems like a harmless thing to have and support. And uh, I'm holding control here, by the way, while toggling so that the menu doesn't go away because uh, I'll take any opportunity to show off holding control while <laughs> toggling menu items. I think it's perhaps one of our nicest little innovations. Anyways, uh, window rollup was implemented by Liav. So thank you, Liav, for doing that. And um, special mention that Liav um, usually works on kernel stuff. So it's really, really great to see somebody who's been uh, in kernel land for most of the time uh, come and work on UI features. Uh, this is something I really appreciate because I like it when people diversify their skills like that. Uh, okay, so then uh, in other sort of graphics related stuff, we have a new image codec this month, a TIFF decoder which was implemented by Lucas, I want to say. Um, yeah, definitely Lucas. And um, this thing is a TIFF. I'll just <laughs> assume that uh, we're doing a good job of it. Uh, I kind of like how it says TIFF test file on a paper in the TIFF test file. And then the second one I was loading there is actually really, really large. It's like 24 megabytes. Um, and it supposedly has layers, which I guess is a TIFF feature. Um, but yeah, super nice by Lucas to add TIFF support. Yet another image file format um, that we can load and handle in the system. Um, we don't have an encoder for it yet, but a decoder is a great start. And I think there's probably a couple of features missing in our implementation. But um, as you can see, it can already load these sweet test files I got off the web. So that is very nice. Thank you, Lucas, for implementing TIFF support. All right. Uh, oh, and uh, we also have a new thing in the taskbar. So let's say that I'm using help, and I really like using help. So I want help to be in my quick launch down here. Uh, so now I can right click on any open app and click add to quick launch. And then boom, you now have a quick launch entry for it. Amazing. Um, and this little quality of life thing was implemented by David. So thank you, David, for adding that. This another thing that reminds me of Mac OS really, um, where they have like, keep this in the dock or whatever they call it. Um, it's just a nice kind of very obvious little thing that should just work, and now it does. Okay, uh, and one of my uh, favorite changes this month is that plus and um, plus and minus control plus minus in the terminal now actually works to change the font size, even when you're using a bitmap font. So previously, it only worked for vector fonts, which I was usually using. But now that I've switched to bitmap fonts here, um, then I can actually switch uh, up and down the font size, which is really nice because I like to I like to do that. I don't know why, but I like the way it feels to change the font size sometimes. Um, so uh, this was done by uh, Shane. So thank you, Shane, for um, adding support for bitmap fonts to the font scaling thing in Terminal. And I guess. Now that we're in the terminal here, let's go to uh, temp portal where we have some uh, local socket files. So uh, now if we run with ls-f, um, actually I need to actually go to temp portal, <laughs> ls-f, uh, then we now get this little uh, equal sign on sockets. And I think if you have a pipe, 
or like a FIFO, uh, it will show a pipe sign. Um, and uh, we didn't do these before. So this was added by rain. I think this is what other LS implementations do. So it's just another nice thing where it's nice to match how other LSs behave to avoid surprising people. Um, right. And then, um, totally unrelated to the terminal, we now have a new fuzzer for our DNS implementation. So Tim Ledbetter implemented uh, DNS packet fuzzing, and we've been running the fuzzer a bit, and Tim found a bunch of bugs and fixed them so that we could actually keep fuzzing. And uh, it's all about like rejecting malformed DNS packets instead of trying to proceed through the um, name resolution algorithm with a broken packet. And it's really nice, nice of, of Tim to um, not just fix old fuzzer bugs, but actually proactively add new fuzzers and fix the bugs that they find. Uh, really, really cool by Tim. So thank you for working on that. And last thing I wanted to mention is uh, very dangerous. Uh, so in the sys file system, we now have a new node here called request panic. So sys kernel request panic. And allegedly, if I echo something to it, it will panic the kernel, which I guess can be useful for testing or something like that. So I guess this would be an interesting way to um, finish up the video with a kernel panic <laughs> voluntarily. So let's do this and we will see if we can panic here. But before I do that, I just want to say thank you uh, very much for um, stopping by and checking out this quick update on Serenity OS. Uh, it's been nice in November, but as I said, uh, most of the development happened in the browser this time. And uh, check out yesterday's Ladybird update if you're interested in what we were doing there. Uh, but for now, I'm going to try out Liev's new request panic node and see what happens. Uh, and I'll see you all in the next update. Bye.